and it's my great pleasure to present our today's speaker, our great friend, Professor Jim Burns. Uh, and the talk, um, title of his talk is The Energy Spreading Ponds Transform and Its Applications. So thank you very much, Professor Jim Burns, for agreeing to present a talk at our conference. I know that you have been in Rostov four times, but now your first time online in Rostov. So thank you again. Thank you again, and please go ahead. Uh, I, I want to thank, thank you, Alexei, and everybody else for the very kind invitation. And yes, I have been in Rostov four times, and I, as I've been saying, I wish I could, could be there now. Uh, um, almost all the world had never heard of Rostov on Don until about two weeks ago when Prigozhin made it famous. But anyway, uh, so. So um, the, the, uh, this PONS, it stands for Prometheus Orthonormal Set. Uh, apologies for the acronym, but uh, most of our work is for the Defense Department and everything in the Defense Department has acronyms. So again, it's Prometheus Orthonormal Set. Um, uh, many of the things I'll talk about, I won't be able to go into detail. But but uh, but a lot of the uh, details are in papers that are on this website at the bottom of, of this uh, screen. So if if you want, to, I'll give you a few seconds to write down that that website. So again, uh, thanks very much for the invi very kind invitation. It's a wonderful opportunity. So I'll move on. I I can go back to that website at the end. And so. Uh, the, the, the Pons transform is, is based on, uh, on a matrix, like basically all uh, digital signal processing transforms are, like the fast Fourier transform and the Walsh transform and the discrete cosine transform, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for the Pons transform, the matrix is a Hadamard matrix. Uh, I'll say a bit more later but, uh, about what a I mean by quadrature mirror filter and a bit more later what I mean by a low crest factor array, and also a bit more uh, what I mean by uh, the optimal uncertainty principle bounds, and also more about the excellent correlation properties. Uh, um, um, all of these things are discussed in various papers that are on that website that I just pointed out. Um, the, uh, I won't be saying anything else about the reed muller uh, apps, uh, uh, aspect of this, but uh, there is a paper on the website that talks about that. And uh, uh, the, the uh, so the Pons matrix is that uh, Pons matrices are symmetric uh, Hadamard matrices with entries plus or minus one of uh, uh, um, orthogonal matrices, of course. Walsh matrices or Walsh Hadamard matrices are also orthogonal matrices with. Uh, Entries plus or minus one, but they're definitely not symmetric. And uh, and uh, all even size Pons matrices have equal row sums, which is completely different from the Walsh Hadamard matrices, where the first row all the, all the entries are one, and the sums of all the other rows are zero. So why why spread energy? The, the, um, I'll, I'm going to give uh, um, a big part of my talk will be the, the live demonstration at the end, uh, and in, in that you, you, you'll see what I mean by uh, the, the fact that the Pons transform of of the signal appears as white noise, so it adds some co covertness uh, to to the transmission. It definitely is not a, a, a very strong covertness, but it, it does add some. Um, because of that covertness and because of the energy spreading, uh, the, the, uh, the waveforms that are uh, that we have developed using uh, the Pons mathematics, it's not the same as the Pons transform, but the waveforms we have developed are naturally low probability of intersect and low probability of detection and, and they fight jamming. And uh, for that reason, these waveforms are in use by the U.S. Department of Defense. Uh, this ro robust transmission, that, that'll be a, be a big portion of, of the live demo. In fact, that is the main reason for the live demo. And the bottom thing you, you'll see in the live demo that the signal 
can face extreme interference in the transmission channel and usable data can still be reconstructed. The computational behavior is, is very good. Uh, th th we have the same sort of transform as in the uh, discrete Fourier transform. So, uh, log, uh, uh, so it's log of, of uh, the, the number of elements of, of the window size as opposed to, to the number of elements, or n squared. Uh, there are integer computations because all the entries are plus and minus one. We have an in-place algorithm. Those of you in computer science know what that means. I only have a vaguely idea. Vague idea. Um, it's highly parallelizable. Uh, we we could build. In fact, uh, Prometheus only does software. But the one, basically, the only hardware thing we ever did was quite a while ago uh, to just to prove that it worked to us ourselves that it works. We built an FPGA. That's a field programmable gate array. Uh, to 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 implement the Pons transform, and everything operates in real time. And as you'll see when I do the demonstration, now this all started uh, well, started a long time ago uh, with uh, work of Harold Shapiro, who was uh, one of the first people who worked for Prometheus while he was a professor in Sweden. And most of you uh, uh, probably didn't know Harold. Uh, and, and he had this uh, corollary to a compactness result of Kamadarov. I hope I'm pronouncing that close to correctly. Um, it's impossible to have uh, an infinite orthonormal set where all of the functions in the set and all of their transforms go to zero to, uh, at infinity too quickly. By uh, too quickly, I mean that, that a specific bound there was P, where P is greater than a half. That's impossible. So the question was, uh, can you do it if p equals a half? And the, the, the basic theorem, which which is uh, uh, why well, we constructed this uh, Pond set to begin with, is that there exists a complete orthonormal set for, say, the continuous functions on a, on a finite interval, like you chose minus pi pi, but that really doesn't matter. So that all of the functions take on only the values plus or minus one, and all of their Fourier transforms are have that bound with, with, with the p equal to a half in the denominator, the square root of one plus absolute c. And a corollary of that is, is a global uncertainty principle. There's a complete orthonormal set for L2 of the line, such so that star, which was that thing where p um, equals a half, such that star is true with, with, with p equal to a half is satisfied for all f in that set. So, so that 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 shows that that p uh, equal to a half is the true uh, uh, point where, where it breaks. And um, for p greater than a half, it's impossible. For p equal to a half, you can in fact not only get an infinite orthonormal set, but a complete orthonormal set. Uh, I do want to say that, that going from the theorem to, to the corollary in, in the paper that, that is online, there is an error in, in that. It works at infinity, the, the, the going from the theorem to the corollary, but it, it's a problem at zero. That has been fixed, but not published, and it's a long story. It was fixed uh, by um, uh, Garisov Kautsky. From from uh, uh, Prague and from Australia, uh, um, who unfortunately passed away two years ago. Or so, okay. The the underlying construction is based upon this beautiful uh, construction by Harold Shapiro in his master's thesis at MIT from 1951. It's an amazing document. Uh, I'm pretty sure I, I have that on that website. I have that that master's thesis on the website. Uh, most of you would know that Harold passed away not too long ago as well. But it's such an elementary and beautiful construction, a recursive construction of uh, two polynomials of, uh, for uh, uh, each of degree two to the n, uh, where the coefficients are plus or minus one. And it's uh, totally obvious when, once you think about it that the modulus of Pn plus one squared plus the modulus of Q 
qn plus one squared is exactly twice the, modul uh, the, the sum of the moduli at the, at the previous level. And if you take that back to n equal to zero, that sum, this p, uh, pn plus one squared modulus plus modulus qn plus one squared is exactly two to the n plus two uh, on the unit circle, which is really quite incredible. And an and immediate consequence of that is that both the PN and QN satisfy these bounds, um, that, that, that the ratio of the soup norm to the L2 norm, so that's P and this soup norm to the L2 norm is uh, in fact equal to the square root of two. That ratio is, is what's called the peak factor or also the crest factor. Uh, and it's, it's the ratio of, of, of the um, peak output to the energy the soup norm in, in digital signal processing terms, engineering terms, is the peak output, and the L2 norm is the energy. And for various applications, that's an important fact. You want to have a certain amount of energy, but control the peak factor, and this construction does exactly that. So to, to describe the pond sequences, let's look at the Shapiro sequences. So you, you, um, this is the first two plus signs are for degree zero. So both coefficients are one. It's the P zero and Q zero both one. Then to get P one, you take the coefficient of P zero and append the coefficient of Q zero. And to get uh, Q one, you take the coefficient of P zero and append the negative of the coefficient of zero of Q zero. So P1 is one plus Z and Q1 is one minus Z. And then you just continue in that exact same way. So to get P2, you take the plus plus from P1 and append the plus minus from Q1. Then you take the plus plus from P1 and attend the negative of, of the coefficients of Q1. So P1, uh, I'm sorry, P2 is uh, one plus Z plus Z squared minus Z cubed. And P, and P uh, excuse me, Q2 is uh, 1 plus Z minus Z squared plus Z cubed. Then you continue in that obvious way. And there are three ways we want to think of these sequences. Uh, uh, sequences of plus or minus ones of laid 2 to the n uh, as coefficients of polynomials, as you saw before. And now, in, in order to, to do the construction of that complete order orthonormal set, we want to think of them as values of piecewise constant functions on, as I said before, we're just using the interval minus phi phi for convenience. It could be any finite interval. And, uh, and uh, it's an obvious uh, observation. Pn and Qn are orthogonal in, in, uh, when, when, when you uh, uh, consider them in, in terms of uh, uh, item C there. So, so in order to construct that complete, so we're trying to construct a complete orthonormal set of digital sequences of length two to the n. So for that, for such a thing, for each n, uh, you would want two to the n uh, such sequences. But the Shapiro construction only gives you two sequences. So it seems like a huge jump to have to go from two sequences to two to the n sequences. And uh, it was one of these things where once you see it, it's totally trivial. It took me a while to see it, but once I saw it, it was, it is, was and is trivial. So, so here's an example. Um, so to, to go from the ponds two by two, so which is just one plus Z and one minus Z, to the ponds four by four, for the first two rows of the ponds four by four, you do exactly the Shapiro construction. But then for the second two rows of the ponds four by four, you reverse the Shapiro construction. So this plus minus comes from the second row of the Shapiro construction. And this plus plus comes from the first row of, of, of the two by two construction. And this minus plus is the negative of the second row of the two by two. And this plus plus is is the the uh, the uh, positive uh, again of this plus plus, and then do the same thing. So so the first two rows of the four by four yield the first four rows of the eight by eight in exactly the same way, and and 
the second two rows, the plus minus plus plus minus plus 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 of the four by four yield the, the, the last four rows of the eight by eight. So in case it's not already clear, so sorry, because it really is, but I'll just go over it. So the, the, the third row of, of the of the um, uh, four by four is plus minus plus plus, and the fourth row is minus plus plus plus. So those two rows become the fifth through the eighth rows of the eight by eight. And the fifth row is this plus minus plus plus from the third row. And the, the minus plus 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 is the negative of, of what's in the third row, uh, et cetera. I don't think I have to go into any more of that. Uh, so, so that's how the ponds are constructed. Now, the, the mathematical properties uh, uh, follow basically in an identical way from uh, that the same exact properties uh, follow about the Shapiro polynomials and the Shapiro, Shapiro sequences. So if we take any Pons polynomial, in other words, epsilon k is any Pons sequence, in other words, any row of any Pons polynomial, then the modulus, uh, for this is, I, it doesn't say, I should have said that. Oh, no, it does say here. For any z that's on the unit circle, the modulus of p is bounded by square root of 2 times the square root of 2 to the n, which means that, that, that the peak factor of any row, and since the matrix is symmetric of any column, I didn't, I didn't point out, uh, excuse me for going back, but the, the, these matrices and all the ones that follow are symmetric matrices, uh, symmetric Hadamard matrices. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, this says that the peak factor of every row and therefore of every column is square root of 2. This is what it means to be a quadrature mirror filter. Well, this identity implies that it is a quadrature mirror filter, but this identity was known to Harold Shapiro and, and others a long time ago. But I'm just saying it's true for all Pond, Pond rows, and not just for, uh, for the Shapiro sequences. And we have that bound that I mentioned before. This takes takes a bit of proof, and that that that, that paper is the, is the, the paper in, in that list that, that's on the website. The paper with the longest name. That, that, that that's this paper. Um, so that takes a bit of proof. That that proof is correct. The 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 the, the error it goes in the hand waving argument. Uh, that both I and all the referees and everybody, until uh, we look more closely at it, like 15 years later, um, that the error is in going, is in the hand waving now, given going from the finite integral to the infinite integral. Right? But the, the result on the infinite integral is true. Okay. Now, the Walsh functions are used in digital signal processing. And uh, as, as uh, we saw, the they piecewise constant take on only values plus or minus one. They do from the basis, and they, they are useful in all, all sorts of applications, and they are, in fact, used in, in all these applications. And um, in some, uh, some environments, the usefulness is hampered because Walsh polynomials have the worst possible stress factor. That's totally obvious because the first row of, of every Walsh polynomial is all ones. So the crest factor is the length of the sequence, which is as bad as possible. They're not quadrature mirror filters, and the Fourier transforms the K as, as slowly as possible. Um, so I won't say any more about that. Uh, Pons adds to the Walsh function. It satisfies all those uh, Pons, all those Walsh properties. Plus, as I've mentioned before, they have uniformly low crest factor. They are quadrature mirror filters. And in the sense uh, defined before, they decay as, as quickly as possible. And again, they're optimal with respect to that global uncertainty principle. Here's just an exam one example of the, the correlation that magnitude. This, I just happened to take uh, for length 64, but, but the same thing works for, for any length uh, uh, for Pons polynomials. Uh, I should, it's, uh, I mentioned a couple of times, or I didn't explicitly mention, all, all the polynomials have lanes two to an inter, positive integer power. So you, you see here, the, 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 the auto, the, the, these are the periodic autocorrelations. 
They're really quite amazing. They're, they're identically zero from minus a quarter of the length up to plus a quarter of the length. All of the auto, auto correlations, periodic auto correlations are identically zero. And outside of that interval, they remain small. Whereas Walsh is zero only, only at the, 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 the zero. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, no, no. Uh, so that's, that's. pardon me for that. The, so that's about the periodic border correlation. But the cross correlations, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the Pond's cross correlations are a bit worse than, than, the, uh, than the Walsh cross correlations. Not by a lot, but they are a bit worse. But the auto correlations of Pond's are much, much better than the and the Walsh autocorrelations. Uh, I'll, I'll say that, that, that this property of minus a quarter of the length up to plus a quarter of the length, there, are multi, there is a construction of multidimensional Pons transforms for any dimension, and all of those transforms satisfy that same property uh, from minus a quarter of the, of the distance from the origin to plus a quarter, except for the peak at the origin which which obviously has to occur, so that's for any dimension of uh, Pine's transform. Okay, so you know, um, and, and what can we say about what is energy spreading in mathematical terms? Uh, so uh, we, we, there's the, a standard definition of, of what's called the Berling minimal extrapolation norm. I, I'm not going to go into any details on this, but, but uh, these details are in you know, at least one of the papers that's on the website. Uh, so um, the, 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 the trivial bound is that if, if A is any Hadamard, uh, Hadamard matrix, the trivial bound is, is that the soup norm uh, of, of, of the transform of, a, of any signal, X is any digital signal of, of, of the same length as the matrix, uh, to, uh, uh, n by n in this case. Uh, note that here the matrices are n by n, not two to the n by two to the n. Uh, so uh, the, the, the trivial bound is that uh, the, the suit norm of Ax is bounded by square root of n times the suit norm of x. That's obvious. It really is trivial. Um, and the claim is that if uh, uh, that um, if 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 we can replace the square root of n by some constant m not large much larger than one, then we get a good energy good good energy spread on, uh, in, in, in that set S. S is a set of digital signals X. And to be more more precise, uh, if if A is a Pons matrix, then the soup norm of AX is bounded by square root of two times the minimal extrapolation norm, the Burling minimal, excuse me, minimal extrapolation norm of X. And so the, in those cases, we get good energy spreading. You, you'll see much more about what I mean by energy spreading when I do the live demo. But, but here's an example. So suppose X is uh, made up of, 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 two, uh, uh, of two signals concatenated, X prime and x double prime, x prime of length k, x double prime of length l, where k plus l is, is equal to n, and a is a Pons matrix, and, uh, and say x prime is, is a bunch of cosines like that, and x double prime is also a bunch of cosines but with a different frequency, then the, the norm that you get, uh, the, then the bound that you get for ax, the suit norm of ax, is three times the square root of six fifths times the square root of a squared plus b squared. So, so that says that in this case, um, the Pons matrix would give you good energy squared. Uh, oh, but that, but that's the end. Okay, so now uh, my, my plan is to go to, to, to the live demo. Uh, before I do that, uh, let me go back to the first slide and put, put that website up there again. And uh, I'll, I'll pause very briefly in case anybody has a question. And if not, then I'll go to that live demo. So I want to find the, the place to go to the demo. Anybody have any questions? Uh, 
Okay, thank you. Then, then I'm uh, I'm going to stop sharing this. Oops. Does somebody have a question? Um, Jim, do. Yeah. It's your last slide. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for for no, a very no, nice no, presentation. No, no, no. Uh, now I'm going to give the demonstration. Ah, because you asked about question. Usually we have questions after the talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, I, I want before I close the slides. I, I guess I wanted to see if there are any questions. I see. I see. So, I see. So Maybe so questions later after. Yeah. So I'll stop the sharing, and and now I'm going to share the um, the demonstration. And let me get to it. And this is this one, and this, and share. Okay. So did. You, do you see this? Uh, 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 yes, we see yes. the picture. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what is this strange looking thing? Uh, be, be, because we, we want to, to give a, a demonstration, uh, as I said, Pons, the Pons transform uh, works for any dimensional signal. But since an image is something you can see, we do, it, we do the demonstration for two dimensional signals. Now, why a page of text? Ordinarily, if you want to transmit a page, a page or a bunch of text, you would not take a picture of it and transmit it. But it's, it's just a good way to, to show an example of what, what's happening. So that's why we use a page of text. Afterwards, if somebody wants, I can also use an, an, an image and do the, the same demo. Now, what's on the left is the, the, the original signal and what's on the right is the Pons transform of, of that signal. And you see on the right, it, 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 it's, it, it exhibits what I mean by, uh, by, by energy spreading and by the, the Pons transform version of a signal looking somewhat like white noise. The image on the right looks like white noise. I'll also say that, that, that I want to point out that, uh, uh, that these algorithms well, they are very computationally efficient, both because of the fast transform, uh, the log log uh, n uh, uh, order, and because it's in place, and because the, the 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 coefficients are all plus or minus one. So when I click this display inverse button, it's going to take uh, doing live take the inverse transform of what's on the right. And because it's an invertible transform, when we take the inverse, we, we, we get, get exactly what's on the left. So now the idea is, suppose we send this signal through, through uh, a uh, transmission channel, and suppose there's noise in that channel. We're going to simulate the same exact noise in, you know, on, on both sides of, of this image. So the... the um, uh, and so we, the simulation is uh, is going to answer the question: What happens if instead of transmitting the original signal, we we transmit the Pons version, and then once we receive it, we take the inverse transform? So the, these button, buttons on the bottom allow me to introduce some some, some noise in in the signal to simulate noise that occurred in the transmission channel. One thing that, that, that happens that can happen in transmission, um, for example, something you're all uh, quite familiar with in audio is uh, you can get some static where portions of, of, of the uh, audio are just uh, totally destroyed. But uh, again, I'm, uh, I'm doing the, uh, the example for an image because it's something you can see. So suppose I introduce some block loss. And maybe a bit more. So, so that that uh, maybe even a bit more. If I introduce too much, then uh, then the total signal would be destroyed. But let, let's say I introduce that block loss. So now, if, if you transmit the image on the on the left, we, uh, uh, we, uh, the, the original that was there, uh, without doing anything else, and, and there's that noise in the transmission channel. What's on the left now is what you will receive. If instead you first took the original image, took its Pons transform, and transmitted that, what you get uh, would be, be this Pons transform that's on the right. Uh, and 
but uh, if you take the the inverse transform, all that noise that that, that's, that was blocked out on the left, all that noise there, all that blackening out, gets spread around this image when you take the inverse, and it's very noisy, but it's some something that that you can read. So that, that that's that's kind of that is the basic idea. Now let me go back and and start over. Oh, sorry, where's my uh, other button? Go down lower, one step here. There it is. Uh, now I'll go back, and now I'll introduce some uh, uh, block noise. We also have buttons for additive white Gaussian noise. All these buttons are, are, are choosing places in the image at random to, to add noise and add some speckle. Uh, um, standard digital signal processing or, 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 or image reconstruction algorithm have, uh, have problems with speckle. Uh, so now, if, if, if you trans took, uh, took the original and transmitted it, and and all all of and and the transmission channel had all that noise. Then what you would receive would be the the image on the left. If instead you took the Pons transform and transmitted that, what you receive would be the image, uh, the, the the signal or whatever you want to call it, the Pons domain version of the signal on the right. But if you take the um, if I haven't added too much noise, I'm going to click this again. It's operating in real time. I just clicked it and you can read it. So that's uh, that's my live demo. So now uh, I, I can do more examples well, if anybody wants, but uh, now I really am finished and open to questions. If anybody has any uh, any questions, any comments. Okay, now thank you very much for very nice talk and very nice presentation. And we have time for questions. You, you see, Jim, maybe yeah. I, I have one small question. How how you manage to do this effect that uh, you preserve uh, your text when using Pons transform? I, I remember you told me once that when you have a decomposition of your signal, then you understand that not all elements, no, not all members of this decomposition are significant for the me, uh, for the image transmission, right? Am I right? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, I try. In, in, in fact, in fact, or, or, or each individual element of, of, of the trans of, of the transform version is is of, of equal significance to every other element. That's exactly what the energy spreading is doing. So you basically can can you basically indicate which are the elements which are the most important ones? There are no most important elements. That, oh. that's, that's basically the point. They're all of equal importance. Whereas, if 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 uh, so, to be clear, this demo I gave is not where where we we have eliminated some portions of the transmission. We we have transmitted the entire thing. And the, the, the noise has been introduced during the, in, in, uh, during the transmission in the transmission channel. We could do do another demo where we 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 take the original, we take the, the transform, we, we we throw out uh, say say half half of uh, half of the terms, and then do the inverse transform. And it um, for for audio. We, uh, I don't have it available. Uh, it might have been on the web, but I'm not sure. Uh, for, for, for audio, that, that was basically the, the, the first thing that we did when we came up with the thought that, that this uh, Pines transform might be applicable for digital signal processing. For, for audio, um, uh, uh, the, the standard uh, at least it was when I knew something about this, which was quite a while ago. But but the standard way to compress audio is to do psychoacoustic modeling. Or what, uh, that's a portion of, of the standard way to do psychoacoustic modeling of the audio signal and try to throw away 
things, uh, portions of the audio signal that that the the, the, uh, um, the, the, the human ear would not hear anyway. And that, that that's a large portion of how audio signals are compressed. Uh, what, what we did for compression, say you have 16 bit per sample audio. And um, um, what, what we did, in, uh, uh, um, instead of doing any modeling or anything, we just take in every coefficient, take say the, top, uh, the bottom X bits. So instead of 16 bits per coefficient, we, we only uh, transmit the top whatever, eight bits per coefficient or four bits per coefficient. And, uh, and on the receive end, you, you do the inverse transform and see what it sounds like. And if you only keep the top four bit, I, I know the, the sounds of, uh, well, I'm using the word sounds, maybe with tongue in cheek, but see. anyway. Uh, but uh, so, uh, sorry to, to, to go on. So, uh, so even with four bits uh, per sample, uh, it's very hard to tell the difference between the original and the Pons transform version with one bit per sample, so one out of 16. So basi basically a 15 to one compression, which, and again, the compression is, is, uh, computation is, is instantaneous. Uh, for, for even one bit out of 16, what you receive, it's extremely noisy, but if it's a voice, you can understand what's being said. If it's music, you, you, you can hear what it is. It's an extremely noisy version of it, but uh, so so that's something that, that we did early on. But so basically, they, they, there are no elements in the transform domain that are more important than any other elements. They're all uh, basically equal importance, and that, 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 that's a major portion of a project that we're we're, we're in, in the middle of now for the uh, national reconnaissance office. I see. Yeah, I remember you showed us sometime uh, pictures, and it was really ama amazing how you recover these uh, images. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I yes, uh, you know, I, I thank you for that. Uh, sorry, but I agree that <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, this, this demo. When I first saw this, I couldn't believe it, but it really is. It really does what it what I just showed, and it does it in real time. Now I, maybe maybe I, I should do also do do this with an image instead of with uh, uh, um, with, 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 uh, with 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 a picture. Uh, let's see if if you would like me to take another couple of minutes, I can do that. Yes, Otherwise, of course. Yes, you have you have time, of course. Okay, so let me find uh, find it. Find, uh, Yes, okay. So, um, so now, oh, uh, 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 oh, actually, they, 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 there was a part of the other thing I wanted to, 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 to do that, that, that I forgot to do. So let me find the, the text again. Uh, this, I guess it's this one. Oh, no, it's not that. Uh, my apologies. We're, we're, I guess I could restart the whole thing and it would automatically be there. Uh, oh, there it is. Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, something has to restart. So suppose uh, what, we, what was lost was, was a few lines of the text. So suppose that during the transmission, uh, the, the, all these lines of the text were, were, were lost to, 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 to some kind of static or whatever the reason was. Sorry. Uh, when I take my finger off the mouse, the, the, the same noise will appear on. And suppose there was also some added white galaxy noise and a bunch of that and some speckle. So again, if, uh, um, uh, if you didn't uh, perform a transform, if you sent the original, then what you would receive would be the, the, the image on the left. If instead 
you didn't do the transform, then the Pons transform version would be what's on the right. But if you take the inverse, you can read it. And to me, I, it, it, it is, I'm sorry, obviously I'm talking about my own work, so I, I do think it's interesting. Uh, so let me open up uh, um, that, that, that image that I had before. Hopefully it won't take me as long to find it. Hey, sorry, uh, uh, what were you talking about? Oh, Ken, that's it. All right, so, so now, okay, I, I'm, I, something gets a little screwy when, when I do the, 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 the uh, when I first open a new new image, but anyway. So, so now, uh, it's the same thing as before. And if I introduce, well, let me, for example, block, block out the camera and the face. That would be a good example. Okay, and the same image. There. Then when I take the inverse, that noise that I just that that was introduced in the transmission channel, it gets spread all around, and and we we get a noisy version of the entire image. Uh, so ordinarily, the one on the right would would be the preferred one. But if, for example, you were specifically interested in in the, the face of the person. Or in knowing what type of type of uh, sorry sorry no I'm saying this wrong. If instead you were specifically interested in in this tower here, or in a clean as clean a version as possible of this tower or of this building or of this building, then if if you, uh, receiving the image on the left would be preferable to receiving the noisy version of the image on the right. So it's not always. Uh, Always a better miracle. It's not always the best thing. Uh, best thing since sliced bread is the quote in English expression. But uh, but it is of interest. So um, so okay. Now I truly am finished. I'll try to answer any questions that you have. Okay. Thank you for very nice pictures. Yeah. Maybe more questions. But maybe one more small, small question, because you speaking about Pons transform. Have you been even have you some tried to to generalize this transform? Like when you see like people uh, studying transforming in function spaces or uh, some Banach spaces, you just when you write your formulas, you just write explicit formulas and you don't think about action of operators or transforms on general theory, like, I mean, kind of for yeah, yeah, uh, Yes, I'm really. Well, this is not applicable uh, for you in this okay. case. Well, it, it maybe it's not, not, not applicable in this, in this specific uh, example or, or a specific application, but I'm very glad that you asked that. I believe there's there's a lot of really nice mathematics still to be done. If you look at the Walsh functions and the Walsh transform, there, there are Walsh Fourier series and all sorts of more abstract mathematics that uh, talks about the Walsh function. The same exact thing should be do, done with, with Pons. And I, I would love uh, for, for people to get interested in that and, and to, to try to do that. There, there are various... Uh, and there's some book, I forget the, the uh, exact title, something like Wall Series and Its Applications. If some, uh, to translate that into Pond Series and Its Applications, uh, there's a lot of real mathematics in there, and that would be a, a beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful, I think, way, way to, to look at these transforms. I, I, I've, ever since we, we started this, I've had this feeling deep, deep in my gut, really, that there's something interesting that we're missing here. There's something fundamental about this energy spreading. Just to give you uh, two crazy examples. One, um, uh, I, I've had people, I don't program, so, so I've, I've asked people from Prometheus and they have and haven't found anything but yet. 
but I've asked them to take a look at the, the, the signals uh, that are now available from the, uh, the search for extraterrestrial uh, um, intelligence and try applying various Pons transforms on, on those signals. Because a natural way to try to transmit things from deep space, because of all the transmission noise that could, one could encounter, would be to use some, some sort of energy spreading transform. And since uh, plus or minus one is, is the easiest kind of energy spreading transform, then that would seem like a re reasonable thing to do. Uh, um, um, another one is I, I saw an article ages ago in the New York Times about a, a brain scientist named Rudolfo Linus, L-L-I-N-A-S. And he talked about how when information goes into the brain, it gets spread around all over the place. If it's audio, it's in one place, if it's an image, it's another place. And even it's not another place, it's spread around, but in different places that audio is spread around. But somehow, when you want to get it out, somehow the brain puts it all together and, uh, and uh, presents it to you. And the language he was using in, no, in, in discussing that was exactly the language we were using when talking about the Pons transform and what it's doing. So I wrote to Rodolfo, and we, we, we had an, an exchange. We exchanged papers. And I couldn't understand what he was writing, and he couldn't understand what I was writing, and it just dropped. But I think there's something fundamental about energy spreading transforms that's being missed. And one day, somebody will see it. So that's that. Also, as far as like things like the Pons Fourier series and stuff like that, I think they would make a, a wonderful PhD thesis. It's, it's, it's not, this is very elementary mathematics. Compared to most other things that are done these days uh, in more abstract mathematics, this is very elementary, and so a, a PhD thesis would be both interesting and not too difficult. I think, in my humble opinion. So, if anybody out there uh, wants me to uh, help direct a PhD thesis, I would be more than happy to, to try to do that. Enough advertising. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yes, you're right. That's what I feel that somebody may build a good theory following your ideas. Yeah, it's very nice and applicable. <laughs> really nice applications. Really. Well, maybe more questions. If no more questions, then let's send speaker for very nice presentation. And again, I, 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 want to thank, I want to thank you, Alexi, and, and all the other organizers, and especially Tanya for your, your help with this. And uh, yeah. uh, hopefully, one of these days soon, I'll be able to, to return to Rostov on Don. Rostov, not Don. Yeah. yeah. I hope we'll, so. We'll see. Thank you. Okay. Thank right. you, and bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.